This is Twit. Well, Google's director of network engineering, whose name is Jeffrey Bergen, wrote a blog post yesterday about Google Fiber. He said that Google doesn't charge companies to prioritize packets the way that Comcast and other ISPs do. Google Fiber is the company's ultra-high-speed internet service, which, although it gets a lot of press, is currently available only in Kansas City and in Provo, Utah. John Brodkin is a senior reporter for Ars Technica and wrote a really cool piece about this. Welcome, John. How you doing? I'm doing great. Thank you. So what is Bergen's blog post all about, and why do you think he wrote it at this, at this time? Well, first of all, it's not for prioritization of traffic. It's for um, it, that implies that you know they're speeding up traffic on the last mile of the network, um, you know, faster than other traffic goes. That's not what they're doing. What they're actually doing is taking Netflix storage boxes and putting them inside their network so that there is fewer hops for the traffic to go through, and then it goes along, you know, at the same speed as anything else would go after that. Um, they've been partnering with. Uh, Netflix for a while because Netflix, they have tried to get as many ISPs on board as possible because they want to have these direct connections and not have to pay for them. But Comcast and other companies like Verizon and AT&T have wanted Netflix to instead pay for these connections. Um, interestingly, Google, obviously, they're not just an ISP. They're a video provider too with YouTube. And we don't know for sure, but they probably already pay Comcast and Verizon for connections. But they've never complained about it publicly. So this is kind of a backdoor way of complaining about it and um, supporting Netflix's argument. Because Netflix is trying to hop on this net neutrality bandwagon and ask the FCC to outlaw payments for peering, which have never been outlawed before. Right. It's not just uh, YouTube, by the way, right? I mean, uh, Google, we're... We use Chromecast here in my house, and oh, yeah. and uh, Google is in the same business that uh, Apple and Amazon and Netflix is in. They they stream video uh, from Google Play, so it's that right. too. Yeah, it's just that YouTube is the second biggest source of traffic on the internet in North America. It's like thirteen percent of peak traffic, whereas Netflix is um, thirty four percent, and that that's not including all of the other Google services. Mm -hmm. Now, John Broadkin. Uh, you know, there, there are a bunch of terms that have been flying around related to the Comcast and Netflix relationship, related to net neutrality, and some of these are really kind of confusing to the public. For example, there's paid peering. Uh, that's, one, that's one phrase. Another one is prioritization. Uh, yet another one is paid prioritization, which can be different from prioritization. And, of course, there's, uh, there's co-location. Now, you mentioned that Google is very much in favor of co-location, in fact, does that. Uh, with Netflix and other, uh, you know, high bandwidth providers. And as I understand it, Google's in, in favor of uh, everything that doesn't give certain types of traffic priority over other types of traffic, and they're also not in favor of any sort of payments for this stuff. They believe that all the companies involved should set up whatever connections are necessary to give the fastest traffic to, 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 to deliver some of the bigger high bandwidth uh, content like YouTube, like Netflix, uh, to customers without any money changing hands. Is that essentially their position? Yeah, I think so. And the idea is that customers, you know, people like me or watching Netflix, we're already paying our ISP for a certain amount of bandwidth and we're requesting Netflix traffic and Netflix has built out a network that it paid for. And so there shouldn't be a, a fee, another fee that Netflix pays the ISPs because essentially both sides are already getting paid for the traffic. Um, it's And, you know, the, the thing that uh, makes it problematic in a lot of people's view is that, you know, the, the ISP market is so uncompetitive. You know, Comcast has something like 20 million customers and most people can't switch because there aren't, there isn't a viable competitor. So essentially Comcast can charge whatever it wants. And Can I, uh, can I play devil's advocate here, though, just for one second? Sure. I mean, I, 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 I kind of take Google's side. You know, I, we don't, the internet's supposed to be sort of free, a free medium. Uh, but to the point you just made, which was in some neighborhoods, there's only one provider. And in some cases, that infrastructure is just not up to the task of supporting everything that's try, that the users are asking for. And so at some point to provide everybody with the best possible experience, they have to 
maybe throttle what's going on in order to, you know, Netflix is compromising some other application, let's say. So what about that part of it? I mean, not everybody gets Google Fiber to their to their doorstep. Yeah, but I don't think that's where the throttling, the, there, there isn't throttling, but that's not where it's happening. See, there was, uh, Netflix was performing really poorly on Comcast, not because of any degradation of the infrastructure on the so-called last mile, which is the point from which traffic enters the ISP's network until the point it hits a consumer's home. All of the congestion was taking place outside of that point where Comcast was exchanging traffic with net with the providers that Netflix were paying to distribute their traffic. Now, when Netflix started um, paying Comcast for direct connection, those connections, which again are on the the out outskirts of the network, suddenly they were they had enough capacity because Comcast upgraded them. So the problem was solved without any of the last mile infrastructure being upgraded. Now, just a, one last question about co-location. Can you sort of tell us how that works exactly? And I understand that there's, you know, so let's say, for example, Google Fiber uh, uses co-location with Netflix. Uh, I, think, uh, I think Bergen uh, mentioned that actually in his post. And yes. so there are Netflix servers inside the Google Fiber facility. How does that, do they, do they essentially have a copy of every movie that Netflix offers? How does that work exactly, co-location? Yeah, exactly. They have um, they have storage boxes. They're called caches inside the ISP's network, and in Netflix can store its entire um, North American catalog in like one or two racks of servers, and that's you know a lot of data. It's like a terabyte, and they usually have two copies just in case one of them goes down. But the idea is, you you've got the the video right inside the ISP's network, so you don't have to bring it from outside the network. It's one less step that it has to go through, and it avoids the the congested links that are often um, that you know exist between Comcast and, and some other ISPs. Now, John, do you think we're going to get to a point where we have co-location inside our house, for example? Uh, I'd love to have a, a box on my TV that has, you know, I don't know, 50 terabytes of data or something like that and basically have everything Netflix has and then essentially unlock it or, you know, whatever they want to do to charge me for it. But um, that's really becoming possible because of the cost of storage, isn't it? Yeah, actually, Netflix suggested this because what they could do is have users download videos and... Um, and they could turn it into a peer-to-peer -peer network where I could actually store a video in my right. house and then it, it becomes part of a peer-to-peer -peer network, which would be very much like BitTorrent where other Netflix users can get video from me. They sort of, this is almost like a threat to the ISPs because the ISPs argue, well, if you're sending more traffic to us than we send to you, you should pay. But if they did this, if I as a Netflix user was the one sending traffic, then they could reverse it so that the traffic is going in the other direction, and then Netflix could argue, well, now you should pay us. But um, they actually are serious about it to an extent. They, they're hiring engineers to work on some kind of peer-to-peer -peer video distribution protocol. I don't think this is ever, or at least in the next five years, going to become the primary way that Netflix video is distributed, but it could... Uh, you know, it, it, if, if people are interested in it, they can sort of opt in once Netflix offered this and they could store video in their homes. Well, I hope that day comes sooner rather than later. That sounds uh, sounds like the way to go, especially when we get into 4K content, which is just really way too huge to, to try to squeeze through Comcast in any sort of timely way. John Broadkin, I want to thank you for coming on Tech News today and, and telling us about all this. Thanks for having me. All right, you can find John Broadkin at ArsTechnica.com and on Twitter at jbroadkin.